gents, amps in the zone. Time for another one. And hey, this one's all about this fine specimen right here, the Sir Ombre amplifier. This is John Sir's take on the early 60s Brown Deluxe amps. So I know this is an amp that John's been really interested in doing for a long time. It's like a personal fun project. He wanted to get this done. Some of his favorite guitar players, Leslie West and certainly Billy Gibbons. And Billy allegedly used a Brown Deluxe amp on some of the early ZZ Top stuff. He's like super famous for being elusive about what gear he used, but that's sort of widely been reported that that's what he used, at least on some of the tracks. So sometimes when you might think it's a Marshall, and that's what I was really going for on that track at the beginning of the video. Obviously, early ZZ Top kind of tones. Put on the first ZZ Top album and then A, B it with that track and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Purposely in that track, I plugged my guitars directly into the amp. I didn't even have a tuner in line. I used a headstock tuner. I just wanted guitar, cable, amp. I used no reverb, no delay, and actually there's no EQ or compression or anything uh, on the individual, individual tracks in the mix. It just sounded perfect, just sticking a mic in front of it. One of the tracks, the rhythm guitar that was panned hard left, is actually the amp's uh, speaker jack plugged into my Marshall 412 that's out in the other room with old greenback speakers in it. The guitar that's panned right is the internal speaker. And to record the amp here in the room, I just used this uh, Bayer uh, M160 classic ribbon microphone. It sounds just amazing on this amp, actually. I love this microphone. It's one of the most natural sounding mics that I've ever used. You can stick it about three or four inches in front of the amp. It's not that sensitive to placement, really. And it gets a little bit from behind because I believe all ribbon mics are actually figure eight pattern. So you get this real good sense of kind of what the amp sounds like in the room, essentially. So for this video, I'm not gonna show you like every single sound that this amp can make. As a matter of fact, there's two channels in the amp and I stuck exclusively to the second channel, the brighter of the two channels. The other one's cool too, but it's darker. And for me, when I'm turning it up, I really like that second channel. It's just got a little bit more clarity once the amp gets sent into overdrive. And it's also just like brimming with harmonics, which is one of the most amazing things about this amp. The brighter channel as you turn it up, it's just like it, the amp starts to get a little bit edgy and overdriven, and before you know it, you're getting feedback, like sometimes endless feedback and sustain, but you're not too far off from a clean sound. And that's sort of the magic of these amps. The mid-range quality, like mids being a little bit more pushed and not so scooped out like the later Blackface and Silverface amps, with those mids still in the circuit, notes will just take off into feedback. It just seems like the thing is alive under your fingers. As a matter of fact, when I was playing the 335, as some of you guys might know if you've ever played a, a semi-hollow guitar, if it's got F-holes in it, the air pumping out of the F-hole is one of the coolest things as an amp gets loud and the guitar starts to feedback. And my 335 was doing that like crazy while I was playing that last lead in that song. And when I hit that last note and bent it, it would have just fed back forever. Uh, it was just sustaining and feeding back. And, you know, it's like there's not that much distortion going on, really. It's this pure musical, awesome feedback. <laughs> I didn't even use the tremolo in this video. There's other videos, there's a Peach Guitars one and there's also one from InStuff Music. And you can watch those to get like some idea of the cleaner sounds that this thing makes and stuff. Although I'm gonna show you a little bit more right now using a telly. So let's get on to some more sound examples here. Uh, sir guys, I apologize, I didn't use any Sir guitars in this video, but I thought mainly I should stick to the kind of vintage food group. So I used my old vintage telly and I used my vintage 335 and I used my Yaren. All right, here we go, it's the Sir Ombre. <laughs> Thank you. 
it's been said that the brown early 60s amps are kind of a tonal bridge almost between American tone and then Marshall. And I think there's a lot of truth to that, even though it's probably kind of a happy accident. And Marshall really wouldn't show up for a few years after those brown amps came out. So when we think about something like a Tweed Deluxe, kind of low power, it was a cathode bias amp, pretty saggy in the low end and with ample low end, and as you turned it up, it got grindy real quick. Now, Leo was always trying to get the amps cleaner and cleaner, so one of the first things he did was with the brown amps, he went from the cathode bias design to a fixed bias design, which is gonna give you way more power, way more headroom, and yet there were still the mids in the circuit. So when I think of that full mid range, uh, but with a stouter bottom end, more power and some punch, that's starting to sound a lot like Marshall to me. So without getting too far out into the technical weeds, the late 50s Tweed Deluxe, which is arguably the most popular Tweed amp, had a 12AY7 tube in the preamp, cathode bias, so as I mentioned, kind of a softer sound, a little more squishy, distorts a little sooner, no negative feedback, what was called a cathodyne phase inverter, so it's a very different design than the brown amp that was about to follow. So moving to the brown amp, we moved to three 12AX7s in the front end, which is really similar to our favorite amp from England. It's not exactly the same preamp design, but, you know, getting a lot closer. It also used a long tail pair phase inverter, really similar to Marshall, as well as the negative feedback circuit was really similar to Marshall. So a lot of things were moving in that direction at this point. Now getting into the mid 60s, of course we get into the blackface fender designs and this is a completely different animal. John Sir described it to me as apples and oranges compared to the brown amp due to that preamp. Uh, the preamp sort of used a more sophisticated EQ circuit that would cause the amp to lose quite a bit of gain in the preamp actually and that meant uh, a cleaner sound and also tonally just a lot less mid-range. It was a lot more scoop sounding so this gets further away from the Marshall thing for sure. But as we get into the late 60s and the 70s, you know, as we know now, rock guitar players were clamoring for more and more distortion. So from a business perspective, uh, had they, you know, sort of had the foresight, it would have been cool maybe if they'd kept the brown amps as sort of a competitor to Marshall as their rock line. But I digress, that of course never happened. But you know, 1970, 1971, you got Billy Gibbons making those early ZZ Top records. And then not long after that, actually, another famous uh, Brown Fender amp player was uh, Brian Setzer. Here's Brian with his amp of choice, a blonde early 60s Fender bassman. So if you're in a club band, maybe playing small clubs and doing free ZZ Top, anything on up to ACDC distortion, Led Zeppelin, a design like this is totally killer. <laughs> my video on the Sir Ombre amps in the zone this is just a really really great amp design I mean it was so much fun the day that I got it I brought it home and plugged it in and you know 45 minutes later I had ringing ears because I just instantly turned it up in here and I was just having such a good time just playing some like classic rock and you know Zeppelin and ZZ Top riffs through it and it just sounded so great and it's you know really freeing and fun sometimes to just plug a guitar straight into an amp with no pedals no effects, no nothing, and just get such a great, instantly gratifying sound, and such a responsive sound, where the amp is responding to the guitar, the volume control on the guitar you're picking, all that good stuff. It's just a really, really good time. There's a lot to be said for simplicity, and there's something beautiful about the simplicity of this little amp.
So kudos to John, sir. Great job. I'm glad you finally got it done. I know it's something that you wanted to do for a long time. And uh, it's also, I do believe, the lowest priced amp in your line. And if you try and find an original Brown Deluxe out there, uh, I think they're at least double, if not more, from what I've seen on Reverb.com uh, compared to what one of these will go for. And this is going to be like way more reliable and just as much fun. Every bit is totally satisfying. Every bit is toneful. You know what I'm saying. Come back and see me real soon for another Amps in the Zone video. I gotta do AC30s. I'm gonna do some other ones coming up soon, soon, soon. I promise, I promise. Please hit subscribe if you haven't. Hit the little bell beside the subscribe and you'll get an alert every time I put out a new video. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys checking out my channel. I am Pete Thorne. I'll see you soon.